So I guess it's uh, supposed to summarize what we were talking yesterday, right? Um, yesterday, in the first session, sort of the workshop, uh, we debated about um, uh, workers' inquiry. Uh, uh, our experience uh, that that was actually uh, the thing which Boena and Yasha started uh, 2010 or before, no? But Boena did it first time in um, Museum Reina Sofia in Spain, and uh, she was explaining how it was. That was an uh, inquiry based on uh, Karl Marx's uh, uh, hundred questions uh, he he made in the uh, late uh, 18th century. 19th century, yeah, 19th century, uh, um, uh, meant to the workers in France. 100 questions uh, asking them about their working conditions, uh, uh, living conditions, and so on. So, uh, Boena and Tiasha, uh, if I'm correct, um, Boena, they transformed that uh, um, uh, inquiry to the conditions of 21st century and first was conducted in, um, as I said, the Museum Reina Sofia, Madrid, 2010, uh, where, it where it was like a uh, interesting experience uh, of uh, 150 employed and uh, interns, only 10% of them uh, participated in that uh, survey, uh, most of them anonymously. And on the end, that uh, uh, survey did not publish. Uh, Boana will explain uh, more about why not. Then, 2012, she came in Belgrade to do the same uh, in organization of uh, Cinema Rex, Nebojša Milikic, who invited her to do the same in uh, Belgrade or Serbia with the uh, 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 people working in cultural field, which means uh, mostly uh, artists, uh, cultural workers, uh, curators, it was one. so we conducted 15 interviews. That was the moment when I uh, joined uh, uh, the project as a technical staff uh, at the very beginning. Um, so uh, we did that inquiry in two weeks in Serbia. And after that, uh, published a small uh, brochure, which is somewhere here, I think. Yeah, and uh, uh, actually two brochures. The one was the summary, uh, the kind of uh, short. Uh, we asked the people in Serbia not all hundred questions less than that and recorded everything, but uh, in that little brochure was, uh, of course, not possible to publish all, all this, their answers, so we choose the, the kind of very uh, short uh, summary of each person. And the year after that, uh, we published the kind of conclusion uh, of, uh, of our experience. So now we got invitation to come to Macedonia, and um, yesterday we were talking with uh, lovely people from here, like uh, two students and uh, uh, also the, the teacher. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, and Oliver, who was uh, also very helpful, about uh, just we wanted to present what we uh, had done. Uh, before and how maybe that uh, workers' inquiry could be uh, uh, done here in Macedonia with, uh, without any intention from our side to, uh, we don't know that context and we don't want to, to, uh, to uh, patronize it just to tell our experience and if people from Macedonia find it's useful maybe to to use some our experience and to uh, adopt it to the local scene, it would be great. So that was very kind of open discussion when I hope they learned something from us and we learned uh, from them and that was uh, all the time the, the, the core of our communication on equal level to, to learn from each other.
So how it will go in future, uh, we don't know, but we hope it, it will go somehow. Also, there was a question how to how to conduct it. Uh, since uh, Reina Sofia, that's a museum, uh, Belgrade, uh, Serbia experience, we were working with people from cultural field, field which is like um, the special, uh, let's say, artistically orientated people, and it's sort of the, the niche of society. Um, there was opinion that it would be great if that uh, question could be spread out of the cultural field, uh, but uh, we'll see if it will go further or uh, it, how it's possible to, to do in future. So that's for me. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. So, ah, Oliver, of course, yeah. yeah. So uh, come and uh, maybe you can say. Uh, it was a. It was. But, but it was a for. It's kind of strange. I can hear myself. Is that what's supposed to be like? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Uh, no, because I'm talking and hearing myself. It's kind of funny. But anyhow, it was a four-hour, uh, four hour quite intense uh, process that we discussed everything that we'd done with the uh, workers' inquiry in the past. The last inquiry and the last analysis was done in 2013-14. So for us, it's quite a long time ago. Many things have changed. Conditions of work has changed. The positions of cultural workers, I guess, it's getting worse and worse, and that's probably the topic that you discussed with the second workshop. Um, but nevertheless, we also said that this inquiry, it's not something that was done like this. So you come somewhere, you do it, you use the 100 questions, and that's it. You wrap it up, and then you have this the next day. It is a long process. It was the first time like this in museum, uh, in Museo Reina Sofia in Madrid. It took us two months to prepare the questions, and then it took the researchers there more than half a year to do this thing in the museum and then in Belgrade as well. We just conducted interviews live for two weeks and so each interview took quite some time, an hour, an hour and a half and then the analysis and then the seminars and discussions and so on. So, so it's not something that is done like this uh, and that's something that we also discuss. Project like this should take a little bit longer, should take longer time to understand the context, to work with the question, and so on and so on. So um, I think it would be interesting that you say the participants on words and Oliver as well. So. Yes, yesterday was very interesting <laughs> because I heard, heard <laughs> Uh, a lot of experiences. Uh, two aspects were interesting for me. One is theoretical, the methodology, how to, uh, learn, how to make the process for cultural workers to gain more rights. And the second, uh, practical uh, way. Because we heard uh, many experiences with uh, which uh, some, sometimes uh, rights of cultural workers were uh, obtained and some were uh, make, uh, made uh, bigger. That's all. <laughs> I'm so glad that I was part of uh, these two workshops uh, because I learned a lot of stuff and I'm also glad that we talked about uh, student rights also uh, and um, I hope so that we will make uh, um, researchers uh, more about that and uh, also uh, with that we will um, um, continue uh, to uh, with that um, knowledge, we will know how to um, uh, later in our life continue and know how, what our, our rights are and uh, how can we make things work and all of that. And um, thank you very much.
Okay. Um, okay, this is weird. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so I personally enjoyed both workshops, uh, mostly because they all connect this point uh, that I'm interested in. For example, the workshop with uh, Jolet and Boyana was about workers' inquiry, which we connected kind of with the students' problems also, questions and things that are unsaid in the faculty. And uh, as well as with Yasha talking about the organization conflicts, uh, the way it functions and everything, it's kind of helping to know how to take steps into making a better society, at least starting with students, like through the student organization or whatever. And so it was a very great experience to learn such things and like to think about them as well and to make them into something uh, uh, into something, uh, how do I say this? Yeah, in a way, yeah. And so, thank you for the great experience. In short terms, we share the opinion, yeah. Maybe you would like to say something? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, maybe I just, ah. I, 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 okay. I, I, I want to, say, uh, to pose a question to, to, to Ivana and Angela. I was just like a bit reflecting yesterday, like and talking with uh, with your professor Slobodan Kastevčeska, like how like bec and also we mentioned with Violeta yesterday that that uh, not a lot of people are aware of the artistic labor and the cultural labor in this country, and how like and also like, how are students thinking on this topic? Like, is it something that you comment, especially that? Uh, that you mentioned yesterday that you did this enquête, this inquiry, not you, but the, the, the university that did this, this inquiry. Well, as students, I've noticed, uh, talking with older artists, they all say, oh, we don't want to crush your dreams now with the reality of the adulthood or anything. But the reality is we, we kind of want to know uh, all of those, the workers' labor and everything because it's kind of preparing us to, on how to act, on how to think, on how to be prepared. And it's kind of important for students to know about these things, especially in the art field. And so I, I think it's quite wrong to be like, we're gonna crush your dreams, do that. Like, we're, gonna, we're not gonna give up or anything. I mean, not. And that's why I think it's important to talk about these topics. Just be prepared simply. Yes. <laughs> we, we keep lighting this green microphone. I'm sorry, I was late. Uh, the baby was demanding. <laughs> um, I, I don't know what was said. I don't know what was said. Uh, so I'm not going to talk too much. Uh, what I think was um, re revealing somehow uh, new uh, was exactly this issue about students, student rights, which maybe are not quite workers' rights, yeah. but there's obviously um, kind of exploitation there and, and, and uh, diminishing rights. Um, I was amazed how, uh, how things have changed from my time, like almost 30 years ago, to, to now in, in the same, same faculty. So that's probably the part we should include in the, in, in the, in the uh, survey. And the other, the other part, I mean, yesterday we, we were not able to really work on selection of questions and things like that, because simply we didn't know the questions up front. Um, I, I found the, the, the original Marx questions, but they were changed. They, 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 some, a lot of them were kind of not relevant in this, this kind of, uh, uh, today's context and needed to be updated somehow. So, so we, as a group, we will probably have to have a couple of meetings before we enter into the, into the survey doing it. The format also was left open, probably will be something uh, printed, but we, we didn't set on, 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 on the format, so that's. Um, 
Yeah, so I think that our workshop uh, really kicked off where uh, the previous one left, because I think that uh, whenever it comes to workers organizing, it's one of the first uh, and important tools and steps is, of course, to map the, 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 the situation on the ground, on the terrain, uh, and move on from that point on. And I think that um, this workers' inqu inquiry always proved itself to be an excellent tool of not just understanding the conditions uh, and getting the data, uh, but also like uh, connecting between uh, between each other. So um, in that sense, I think that, uh, like I said, we just um, continued with, with the work uh, that we did on the first workshop. Um, since I personally come uh, from, uh, I would say, two fields of organizing. One is uh, within the uh, non-hierarchical anarchist um, activist circles, uh, where I think I've learned a lot of um, non-hierarchical methodology that I bring into my professional work because I worked for uh, many years uh, as a head of advocacy for Asociacion of the um, in freelance uh, uh, in, and independent scene uh, cultural workers. So um, w one of the first things that we opened up during the workshop was the difference or the relationship between the formal Organ advocacy organization uh, that is struggling for the rights within the, the field of legislature and the necessary uh, counterpart, which is self-organization of the workers itself, uh, and how these two things are connected and what these two things can achieve. In some other words, of course, we are talking about reform and revolution, but you know, if we don't want to use uh, such big words, <laughs> then, uh, then I think it's important to understand that um, Without uh, a strong self-organized uh, worker struggle, it is very hard for any kind of formal advocacy group to actually achieve anything because you simply do not have the the, the, the strength of the. Ar I mean, you might have the strength of the argument, of course, and the data and the ideas, but if you do not have the strength of the people pushing for this, it's very hard to to organize. So we spoke a lot then in uh, in the next steps about uh, especially this part how to to mobilize how to how to uh, how to connect how to to organize um, what we learned during this workshop and what I've learned in my work before that is of course that um, within the art field particularly um, and especially in the freelance scene where um, there is a huge precarity of working relations, of course a lot of people do not understand themselves as workers. Um, or if they already understand themselves as workers, they do not really grasp, or it's hard for us to grasp, um, the old concept of the worker struggle because, of course, um, you know, we spoke a little bit about the origins of precarity as uh, as a struggle against the Fordistic for, for uh, eight-hour factory work line, uh, which of course does not fit into the concept or context of artistic work often, um, and also uh, in in the um, in the area of uh, former Yugoslavia, uh, this was already recognized uh, in in uh, in the field of culture. Um, in, in the socialist regime where uh, the, the special status for the cultural workers was created that is still somehow existing in more or less uh, all the countries of the former Yugoslavia. Um, but of course, um, if perhaps the struggle uh, to get outside of the eight working uh, hour uh, in the 60s and 70s, 70s was in a way even um, a liberatorial in a way, uh, of course today it is a synonym for poverty, for precarious relationships, um, and for a lot of problems that we are dealing with in everyday life. So, you know, to understand, uh, you know, the classic, um, let's say, uh, territory of worker struggle used to be, you know, uh, eight-hour working day. It used to be organizing in the working place. It used to be the, well, uh, the 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 rights of the workers connected to the welfare state. Yeah, this is the the the, the very short summation probably of the uh, worker struggle in the late 20th century. 
of course, today, as a freelance uh, cultural workers, as an artist, as artists, um, we do not have uh, like perhaps we do not want to get back to the the fordistic kind of labor, uh, and that we definitely often do not have a, a working environment in which to organize. With others, we are highly individualized, uh, and of course, uh, the welfare state is dying and slipping through through our fingers. So, um, if we do not have all of those things, how do we then organize? What uh, issues do we organize around? What tools do we use when we organize? And you know how, in this context, we still can claim uh, ourselves as cultural workers uh, and claim uh, working rights for ourselves. So this was one of the topics that we opened up uh, during the workshop. And what we tried to articulate somehow was the fact that um, precarity in itself is not just a question of financing and the precarious nature of our, uh, our of our paychecks or the non-existence of them. Um, precarity is something that, especially in the art field, truly affects every aspect of the everyday. Um, it it means that it uh, affects uh, uh, you know uh, our relationships. It affects our health. It affects our living conditions. Um, it affects the, the 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 inability to separate oneself between the private, let's say, the private time or uh, or the non-working time with the working time, because everything you do is subjected to to the hunt for the next for the next job. Uh, every relation that you form is subjected to the networking. Um, so there is literally never, um, you know, uh, a moment in which you you step out of the work working frame, so then it becomes very hard to, to, to again, to struggle for the classical um, uh, working relations. Nevertheless, I think it's very important that uh, when we are trying to organize, we come out of this situation of the everyday of the, precar of the precarity, because through that, um, our struggle becomes very personal, it becomes very non-detached, um, and um, what is even more important, uh, it contributes to the fact that we can organize from our own positions. Uh, we, uh, we begin to recognize that the, the, the struggle is not alienated from us. Um, and um, in, in that context, uh, the, the emancipation of ourselves as cultural workers starts happening, and from that point on, of course, what we can do is, is uh, to organize with people who are sharing somehow the experience uh, that we share um, and, um, and, and also of course then um, we come to the second point where we spent quite a lot of time talking about and that is uh, the convergence of the struggle. Um, I think that we spoke a lot uh, about the fact that um, no matter how big our sector is, I, I really liked what Vladan was uh, saying yesterday, you know, that uh, the precarity of art workers is very harsh, but is nothing compared to precarity that some other uh, more mar uh, even more marginalized people in the society are feeling. And, and this is also what we were speaking about, that it is extremely important that we are able to recognize other people's struggle and to understand that the best way to join or support that struggle is perhaps not to sign a petition supporting it or you know uh, be trying to be good allies to them you know like a step taking a step back from their struggle but rather engage in that struggle in a way that we organize ourselves and become accomplices um, so the, the difference between the allies and accomplices is something that we spoke a lot about uh, because I think that oftentimes um, when uh, a struggle starts to happen we do not feel it as our own or we don't really know how to approach it and then uh, you know if, if it happens especially if it starts to happening either through class or gender or ra race um, uh, uh, lines uh, that you know that when we recognize our privilege we don't really know how to weaponize it in that struggle so again we take a step back and th this is the last thing that we want to do in such struggle um, so we spoke a lot about how to be good accomplices rather than being good allies. Um, um, we also spoke about the, the necessity um, to not just converge our struggle, but also to form relationship outside of our own communities. Um, for instance, uh, especially in, uh, when it comes to cultural workers in the, um, uh, in the freelance, in the independent scene, 
We often, uh, whenever the struggle starts happening in the public sector, for instance, uh, we often perhaps feel a little bit like, oh, you know, but uh, you are fighting for your bigger paychecks. We don't even have paychecks, you know. So, um, so that lack of solidarity sometimes contributes to the fact that our struggles are very separate, even though if they are perhaps happening in the same branch, let's say art or culture. Um, so, uh, and, and also, of course, when things start happening, when you are already in the struggle, if you have not formed relationships before, uh, it's going to be very hard to form them in that moment when it, there's already the, the networks are already supposed to be, you know, functioning. So we spoke a lot about how to recognize uh, ourselves, uh, how to find each other, uh, how, to, how to form relationships and how to try to figure out if there are points of convergences, convergences of our um, situations that we can organize around. Um, and of course, like I said before, um, then we spoke uh, about how to even start, um, because uh, I think that we all recognize that um, you know, very often we are very vocal about our problems when it comes to hanging out in bars or something like that. But um, you know, coming from the analysis of the problem, which we all feel and express very well, to actually take a step towards organizing is sometimes, um, th there is a gap between that. Um, and people for many different reasons um, are finding it hard to, to mobilize themselves. So we spoke a lot about, I mean, first of all, how to get them mobilized, how to mobilize ourselves, and also about some of the dangers that come out of being, you know, um, uh, uh, sort of like having a macho uh, attitude towards the struggle, like, you know, that you always have to be tough, that you always have to be ready, that there is no space for failure, no space to be tired, no space to be disillusioned. Um, and so, and that that is really not helpful because it just leads to burnout and bitterness towards others. And again, this is not a way how to successfully connect. Um, so we spoke also a lot about how the struggle has to reflect the 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 society towards which we are striving so that it has to keep in mind that we have to create a safe space of care for each other uh, during the struggle, how we have to um, keep in mind um, that there are different relations of power coming out of from many different factors and those relations need to be challenged if we want to have a successful and strong organizing. Um, and, of course, that one of the first steps, like I said before, and like uh, Jole Boyana and others were speaking about, is to actually have a tool to map the situation on the ground and to, to not understand, again, this tool like the inquiry as, um, you know, uh, as something that you start and then you end up with, with the product and that's the end of the project, but rather that you use this as one of the tools of the struggle to get to know each other, to get to, to, to connect with each other, and then see where, um, where this can actually take you. So I think that um, this is probably like the summation of what we were talking about. I'm sure that like um, I forgot a couple of things. I, I know that we spoke a lot about also conflicts, uh, how to productively engage with, with these things and so on. Uh, and I'm sure there were like in these four hours of really intense and wonderful debate uh, and inspirational debate, there were other things, but perhaps someone can uh, add to what I was saying. So, um, thank you very much, and uh, I think, Tiasha, you um, tackled uh, very much, very many uh, important aspects, and I agree on a lot of, I, I agree on uh, many issues that you uh, raised up, um, and I, I would, I actually, I wanted to ask uh, more about uh, practical um, development of the workshop uh, and especially the relation of the questions that Boena and uh, George um, pre presented at the beginning, uh, the questions from Marx, from, the, from Marx inquiry, because uh, I was a um, participant of their um, survey in Belgrade uh, um, seven years ago or yeah and uh, and um, I was also participating when this publication came out with the results of the inquiry I was also at the discussion after that uh, present maybe one year after that or six months 
Um, and uh, my impression was that, uh, and we also, I think that we also published in Dark Leaks uh, some part of it, uh, or maybe some uh, results on the, our website, PDF. Never mind. Uh, I was following this process, and uh, um, it was, um, I had the impression back then that uh, those questions that, uh, that you could find in the 19th century of Marx, that they are somehow um, also in the 21st century valid. Uh, I did not um, have a uh, feeling that uh, those questions are, uh, because I felt it like very general. And um, I didn't felt that they are not fitting to the labor condition which are now um, in force. Even that uh, labor condition of 21st century uh, at the European uh, economic periphery and of the 19th century in Europe are more or less more similar than maybe the economy of 20th century, uh, second half of 20th century when the welfare state was uh, still functioning uh, in East and the West. Um, so the, I felt like those questions are probably um, very good, but I have also to admit that those questions were, um, or this inquiry was happening uh, after the financial crisis in 2009 and 2010, and a lot of people, um, it was a kind of, um, uh, back then, a kind of um, going back to the Marxist analysis of the crisis um, in 2009, 2010, when the crisis uh, happened uh, all around the world. And uh, I feel that probably today with uh, you know, um, IT sector and also with uh, uh, so-called creative industries um, and also like uh, through the program of um, EU uh, creative culture and all this implemented um, huge kind of programs which are basically industrializing uh, artistic and cultural labor and cultural uh, sector even more in the commercialized, um, commercialized space. I have the impression that um, maybe those questions are, have to be even more sharp, you know. Um, or my question for you is actually um, uh, how uh, you are going to adopt those questions for um, Macedonian context as I think that probably you will um, develop those questions now and then you will ask the people from here uh, to answer those questions. Um, I suppose it will be like that. Uh, and uh, I would just like to ask you um, about uh, how you think about those questions today because Oliver was mentioning that y your conclusion was that those questions are maybe need to be more adopt or to go into another direction. So this is more a question for your group, for Jole, Boena, Oliver, and also for you, uh, how you felt about them. The thing is, we didn't really go through the questions, uh, the updated questions. Um, what I found like from uh, the original questions, and I didn't go through all of them like from 1880, 80, right? 1880, 80, 80, right? Um, the, the language was also uh, different, like uh, they're talking about apprentices, for example. Now you talk about, I don't know, internships probably, instead of uh, so, but they have already done that, you know, they have adjusted to the language to, to, to this time. But there were also, like, there's a question how many apprentices are in your, uh, I don't find that irrelevant. And I don't, uh, from a position of a worker, I'm not sure I, I, I know the de data, you know, I can, I can give that data, just that's, well, that's that's what's the, the issue. Let's say that uh, that I noted with the, the questions, and 
uh, I mean, to the Macedonian context, I, I guess, uh, well, we talked about, you know, like how new media also uh, influence and those, you said, like, uh, those questions are maybe missing now in, 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 in the inquiry uh, from seven years ago because just some of the platforms were not there, you know, like, uh, so maybe in that sense it's, it's, it needs to be updated. Uh, the young kids, they were talking about Instagram and things like that, and, and memes and things like that, and, uh, you know, like... Because a lot of work is to be Yeah, yeah. So so something. Which I forgot, forgot to say. And the Boana was uh, working with people from Reina Sofia f for two months to, to make a questionnaire. And that's the uh, answer, actually. The, it's not just to take the questions. So if people in Macedonia find interesting this questionnaire, I hope that they will work on it and uh, adopt it to the local context. We just wanted to present our experience uh, from the, our context, but it's a different context, different people, so they will find uh, the appropriate way to adopt these questions and the method, because methods uh, uh, are changing rapidly uh, with technology. Seven years ago, I didn't know for the Instagram, for the Facebook and things like that. Now the, the technology changed our life a lot and how people uh, perceive the reality, how they getting information. So uh, we were invited just to present it to, to show how it was and if they find people in North Macedonia will find it interesting, uh, it will be great. I just like wanted to add some something like to this questionnaire as well. Like I think um, we are a small scene in a sense. Like this is the, the cultural context, especially this like that we call independent. Although we kind of refrain here from the independent cultural scene, we call it maybe more non-institutional in a sense, because like I think that this independent kind of really, it's. Uh, maybe it has to be put put on discussion nowadays. But then like I think that although we've we've and we presented yesterday what we've done so far and it was done also like this struggle with for the labor rights of the cultural workers started many years ago and it was like it had many discussions. Still this inquiry is kinda needed maybe nowadays to also like see where where we are and what we think nowadays. So it doesn't matter if, it, if it's going to be um, summarized in a publication or in Instagram or in like different kind of social media. Like the format can differ, like, but still like I think that we have to really now, now I, maybe I, I sense it personally that we have to see where we are and what, we, what can we do. Maybe somehow this struggle has to shift in different kind of direction from what we've done so far. So I don't know, like, and, and that's why I think it can be this. This that's why I actually think that this inquiry and then, uh, and these workshops, two the two workshops, are really kind of nice point to 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 tackle again these questions. Yeah, I will add that I mentioned yesterday on the presentation that we want to advocate for net salary in the future, which means that we really don't know what we have on the ground. I mean, we have some information, but if you don't have really reliable information, it's all speculations. And then it's also about like really knowing the context, recognizing the context, but really having the information to go for further advocacy. Because the previous government, uh, like half of the politics was done on their uh, tactics of, of facts and figures. So we need to create these facts and figures in order to go and say, look, we have this situation. If you do this, you can have this, but with really reliable information. So what this is one point. Another point, I'm really happy that we have students here because we need to integrate this new generation, whatever that happens or still happening with, let's say, our generation or with uh, shrinking the scene or with not communicating among each other. It's the thing that we, should, we shouldn't allow to happen for the, for the generations coming and re, re, we really need to share with them our good but also our <laughs> bad experiences and try to work more collectively in order to um, go for a better condition for, for everybody in the future as a long-term strategy. I 
I can also like maybe I uh, just like wanted to ask uh, Tiasha and also Boyana and Jole like somehow like how this um, yeah the, the the workers inquiry and also Associatia what uh, what uh, what has been done in Associatia what is still going on like did a lot but still like what do you like on a practical level on more daily level what's going on with the uh, this uh, non-institutional cultural scene like how uh, did things change in the past years on this uh, on this uh, in this sector that was my it's a big question, of course, <laughs> uh, and it's, uh, I think that with advocacy, um, this is a very painful work uh, that brings little or no results, uh, or uh, or you know the cycle of like getting a, a something done is like between I would say five and ten years, uh, w which takes a lot of patience and, and courage, I think. Um, so I, I really respect everyone here in Lokomotiva and everyone else who is like doing this painful work. I, I, I think it's important to write recognize it. Um, nevertheless, I think that like um, Asociacia has a long history in Slovenia, you know, and it was developing parallelly to the NGO scene and the, the uh, you know, in the 90s and, and early 2000s. And I, I think that um, just recently uh, we were reflecting these processes um, with some of the main players uh, 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 in, in, in the independent scene and realized that, you know, um, sometimes people say, oh, the issues are the same as they were in the 90s is nothing changed, but that of course is not true. Like if we look at the last 20 years in Slovenia, the, the work, the advocacy work on the independence scene, first of all, um, through careful research and then long time advocacy brought new spaces. We've gained Kino Shishka, we gained Stara Misna Elektrarna, we've gained Spanski Borci, we gained some smaller uh, places, um, uh, some new places like Glei Theater, I mean, that were there before, but like, uh, turned into another space, um, some smaller galleries and so on, uh, which are now crucial, uh, 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 you know, platforms uh, of getting together and like uh, um, uh, showing the art. Um, and of course the struggle for the space still exists. We still do not have proper space for contemporary dance, which is still a very painful issue in Slovenia. We still uh, need a lot of studios, re residences and so on. And these are the ongoing struggles, but that has definitely been a huge success uh, of advocacy work. The second huge success I would say in the last years has been the slightly more stable financing through four-year programs, through two-year programs, through one-year programs, both on municipality and on state level. Um, that has been the direct result of the advocacy work. Uh, and it is, of course, still ongoing because, you know, we we have new needs, we are mapping the, the, the situation on the ground, we are trying to improve the 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 the, um, the conditions of financing and of course now we came to the point where some of the NGOs have grown out uh, of this even four year cycles because they are so big um, also like so um, recognized on the European level that they need perhaps um, you know uh, some kind of status between the public uh, institution and the NGO so we are talking now about some concessions from the state you know to do the, pub the work in public interest and so on so this is now an ongoing debate um, the third thing that I would say has, um, despite still very poor working conditions, because we have to understand that when it comes to freelance artists, um, third of them lives under poverty line and half of them doesn't uh, get the minimum wage in Slovenia. Um, so, you know, the situation is still very dire. But nevertheless, we have had some success. We've managed to to to, to force the state to give us uh, some form of long-term uh, um, uh, health. Uh, um, uh, you know, when you get sick uh, and uh, the state pays for you. Uh, uh, yeah, not not insurance exactly, but. Sick leave, yes, that's the one, thank you. Um, so, you know, we got that uh, because this has be been a huge problem for some of the artists who have um, uh, encountered long-term diseases like cancer and, and so on. Um, and so out of that struggle, we've managed to um, to get that. Now we are struggling um, to so that this sick leave would not start after 30 days, but after three days and, and like therefore um, equalize with, with the situation that a worker that is employed gets. Um, 
The second thing that uh, is important is that we have managed to stop a couple of uh, very dangerous legislation that would either endanger the status of a freelance worker or even the NGO sector as such. Sometimes in advocacy work, stopping something bad is actually a success as well. Um, one of the successes in the last years that I am particularly proud of, uh, and unfortunately we've had to go all the way to the Supreme Court to actually get that ruling and the change of law, but we did it and we succeeded was some it looks like an innocent bureaucratic you know one line in one stupid law thing but it it, it had a huge effect because um, the state was kind of uh, you know pretending that if you do not have like the minimum wage as an artist as a freelance artist it means that you are like you know, stealing something or not uh, reporting your taxes, and therefore, like, it's taxed you as if you are getting the minimum wage, which is, of course, not a reality, and that affected, like, your uh, inability to get social support. You had to pay more for your kids in kindergarten. You could not get social housing and so on. So we've managed to, to prove that this is unconstitutional, uh, that this is, uh, this is like, um, very problematic, and therefore, um, now we are already having a very concrete results of people being able to, to apply for some kind of social uh, structures and uh, no longer being treated um, you know, as criminals in their poverty. So this criminalization of poverty is something that is uh, very present in Slovenia and this is also one of the struggles that we are trying to fight against. I mean, I'm sure that like I've didn't um, say a lot of things also, but these were some of the concrete struggles that we did um, also. In the last three years, we've managed to increase the budget for culture um, significantly. Now we are again in decline, but uh, this has been one of the struggles that was most engaging in the last two years because we've managed to connect not just the freelance, the independent scene, but also the public institutions. And it was a collective struggle of cultural workers and artists um, throughout the whole field. This was really one of the few times that we really got together uh, and were also successful. We've gained some additional funding and so on. Um, so, you know, the struggle like is not just a one issue struggle. It's it's, um, it's something that is happening like um, on many different parallel topics. Um, and you know, now I've tried to, to say those good things, but of course the reality of the situation is that this is still a very precarious um, uh, labor uh, situation. Uh, the NGOs do not have the sufficient means to sustain uh, employment for the people. Um, the, 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 project, the money for the project for the artists is still not sufficient for them to live in you know, minimum uh, humane conditions. Um, like I said, the space is still need to, 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 to get uh, financing for uh, maintenance, uh, we still need new ones and so on. So it seems to me that like this is still the field that is underrepresented, that is underfinanced, that is, you know, um, yeah, that is very problematic uh, in many ways. Um, but nevertheless, I think that um, we c can also maybe be an example of like with hard work and uh, resilience, you can actually get things done. Um, uh, and, and, and when you look in a big longer historical context, you see the actual um, you know, development of, of certain conditions that could be much more dire uh, if there wouldn't be this kind of organizing. Um, <clears throat> I cannot really speak for the NGO because I am uh, coming from a very privileged position. I have a permanent contract in the national institution, Moderna Galleria in Ljubljana, and I've been working there for 20 years. So I am uh, safe in this regard, but I think what Tiasha was saying in this last point that you mentioned at the end, when you said there is kind of common struggle that involved not only the NGOs, but also the artists and some institutions. And I think it's here maybe the point to rethink also 
what the institutions are in this context. Because I know in Slovenia there is a couple of places. There's Mladinsko gledališče, which is very critical, very political. It's been like this for a couple of years. And it's also some other places. Moderna Galeria has been trying for some years to rethink this also its own positions towards NGOs, towards precarious workers, towards artists, and think uh, about this possible collaboration in, with other political allies, because we have the same issues, we have, we're talking about the same questions. Uh, so maybe it's worth seeing what are the options to have this kind of allies. I don't know how it's here, how it's with the institutions here, is this possible or is not possible. But the institutions can also be powerful allies, I think. And Tiansha has this experience. We worked a lot on various projects on how to open institution, how to rethink the institution, how to think this monster institution idea, how to com combine, how to bring uh, other kind of political things in the institution, how to connect institution with social movements, which was uh, when did we started in 2006 with the uh, occupation of Rock Factory, which was also quite uh, interesting results from that. So I think, do not forget that. Maybe it's like a dead end, but maybe there is some possibility. Yeah, um, Ivan asked me to com to say a bit about the situation in Serbia regarding this um, organization of uh, cultural workers and labor. Um, I'm um, I'm actually in similar position as Boena because I have permanent contract working for Rosa Luxemburg Stiftung since 10 years. So in that regard, uh, I'm not any more part of um, independent scene in Belgrade in Serbia, uh, especially not in the sense of being active in these um, networks, because, um, but um, I'm of course active in another sense because um, I'm um, participating in uh, activities and uh, I'm also, um, also participating in different um, uh, activities which are related to their struggle and so on. Um, yes, and I'm also um, as an artist participating in another, on another level in this, but, um, I want to add uh, something which is um, like, you know, the problem which is right now going on in Serbia, I have actually, after Violeta's presentation from yesterday, I had impression that there are um, um, higher level of um, formulation what is needed in Macedonian context than actually in Serbia, because in Serbia there is a major struggle is actually um, for higher, um, budget for culture. This is the major focus of the independent uh, Serbian scene now. Uh, so-called NKSS, Nezavisna Sena Serbije, Kulturna Sena Serbije. And um, I'm actually, I was uh, one of the, um, I mean, my organization, previous organization, which I was part of it, was one of the, founders of the Druga Scena, the other scene, in 2006. So this was a network of independent organizations that, uh, that uh, was founded um, and uh, in my sense was much more political and much more uh, radical than after that this association of independent scene of Serbia. Uh, which followed uh, after 2000, but there are many reasons why the other scene did not uh, somehow uh, continue it, it uh, dissolved or it uh, melted into this association of independent uh, organizations. And uh, my major critic was that, um, and this is, was also, I was also formulating this yesterday, is that uh, if you only um, advocate for, uh, on the level of uh, professional organizations, then you are losing the connection with the reality, with other political struggles, with economical issues in your country, with uh, other aspects which are, and contexts which are framing your uh, position. And uh, I think this is the major problem of uh, those networks, which are only advocating for the professional organization's rights and not for the labor conditions of the, of the art workers per se. 
Um, so um, I think that um, after uh, all this, um, after the right-wing government uh, came uh, in Serbia in power uh, with Vucic uh, and so on, uh, like um, a lot of um, labor, um, like labor code was changed several times. Also, the, uh, this um, professional status of independent uh, worker uh, also changed. Uh, there is uh, now, um, uh, and they want also to change it in that way that they even uh, cancel it. I think in Croatia there are also uh, several uh, changes in this context. Mm, uh, and uh, they and the state doesn't pay any more uh, regularly um, for in the for freelance artists. Uh, state doesn't pay any more um, uh, social uh, insurance and health insurance. So the situation uh, is like that: that uh, so-called freelance artists have now debt. And because of that debt, they cannot get uh, so, uh, health insurance. And uh, its state owns um, something like, um, I don't know how many millions to the freelance artists. And they are, they are simply delaying the payment. And because of this delay of the payment, uh, people are uh, completely uh, distracted. Uh, so they um, there, there were attempts to uh, organize with the uh, lawyers, uh, with uh, some other uh, uh, options, uh, and but it's simply if state doesn't pay the, their obligations, I mean, how to, what, what to do, I mean. And a lot of uh, people, because of their uh, health insurance or because of their family issues, like uh, uh, they they simply cancelled the status because it was uh, it was not any more um, avo uh, affordable, actually. Uh, and uh, this is happening in the last let's say three or four years, and um, I think this is the main issue why um, why this uh, organization of uh, culture workers, artists, and uh, and uh, also people from the independent scene is practically distracted. So the distraction is like much lower budget uh, from the Ministry of Culture and uh, the city, or budget which is hijacked by the fake NGOs related to the ruling party, which probably happened in Macedonia during Gruevski government. And, uh, and the second is that the status of the freelance artist is uh, practically, practically endangered by uh, this, uh, this delaying of payment uh, of the social uh, insurance and so on. So the situation for, uh, for the freelance artists and cultural workers in Serbia is uh, worse than five or ten years ago. Mm. Maybe Biljana, you know, you are... No, I just, um, <clears throat> I don't know, I, you, you said uh, almost everything. I just wanted to add about um, this, uh, that you were, Vladan, saying this professional organization struggles and the labor struggle. I think it has to be parallel. And I think demanding for higher budget is also in that line very important because otherwise it makes us uh, totally being um, on the margins anyhow we are, but uh, being invisible in the society. And this is uh, what was happening with this, as I call implicit censorship of the last government, because they were deliberately not supporting us. And therefore, our activities were minimizing and the scene in total become, you know, kind of uh, somewhere in the shadow or in the scarces of the society. So, however, I think it's um, that both things are very important, and the labor rights is something that I started being uh, started realizing that has to be the first, let's say, or the front line of our struggle, because uh, having in mind that the NGOs or this independent scene is becoming. Um, 
um, I don't know, uh, in its 40s. So less and less we have people being uh, younger than 40. And being in my mid 40s, I started thinking what comes after my, I don't know, more than 25 years in the field, but having these 10 years of security only and a pension. So after, I don't know, some years, I have to go in uh, retirement and what kind of retirement of a such, uh, uh, um, uh, art workers or cultural workers will have in this country. So this is even in the social, it, it, it's below the social, uh, social level, let's say. And this is something that it's a prior to be think of, especially because uh, nowadays uh, what is happening is we are struggling for changes in the law that Violeta was talking about, and struggling to get together with the institutions to understand our concerns and our problems as our common ground. But unfortunately, uh, this is not still happening. Probably there, there, there is a need of time, there is a need of effort, and there is a need of encounter on a different levels because we don't see each other, we don't meet each other, and there are no spaces where we can meet or do something. So therefore, this uni unionization and organizing in a kind of a syndicates and unions that would be common, maybe it can be a meeting point where the struggle can start and can happen. I'm not sure how that can be done, but this is something what we were thinking about. And there probably can be this, how to say, starting point to make ourselves as a cultural wor workers visible. And I used this visible yesterday, I think, and today. But I think here in this um, kind of um, delusional society, you know, only things that are kind of commercialized are much more visible, and only issues and related problems with the institutions are uh, visible. Now we were facing the struggle of the institutions for their uh, for their uh, collective agreement. And uh, we, I think that uh, what had to be done is probably maybe to come with them and, and struggle with them. And also to start with something uh, which hasn't happened, you know, so far. But in a sense of the institutions here, Boyana, institutions are not elephants, they're triple elephants because nothing is changing. And also what is the problem here is there is, um, we were talking with Tiasha, this is no capitalistic society, this is like criminalistic society. So even everything what we start doing, it's from, to criminalization or clientelism. So it can be uh, criminalistic slash uh, clientelistic. So it's like this um, clerofascism become uh, clientelism, uh, criminalism, and it's uh, somehow, it's, uh, it's very difficult to understand where you start the negotiations, what are these meeting points, how. And no matter we started up about this um, law, now it's stuck somewhere, and we don't know where it's stuck. We don't know to whom we can talk, how we can address these issues, and how to continue, because it's already three and something years ago. And I was saying, like, okay, I'm struggling since 40 to get this uh, um, uh, social security, because we were changing this book of uh, rule, but still every year I cannot do it, you know, and the years pass and I'm thinking like, oh my God, I'm just jumping towards my retirement uh, time. Still not, but still thinking about it. And then I will not have it. So just I wanted to add uh, other issues that probably we are facing here, especially because of this uh, inability to, to find a way how to struggle for their labor rights. Uh, thank you. I, I, I would maybe just like to add, because you are mentioning institutions and people working uh, in the institutions. Um, you know, I remember from in the 2000s, in like mid of 2000s, when the, the other scene was formed in Belgrade, Druga Scena. 
that uh, uh, like we formed uh, and from the beginning we had uh, some kind of antagonistic relation toward the state institutions. Uh, of course, there were the so-called democratic changes uh, in, uh, in Serbia after 2000s and a lot of people changed in the institutions but it still felt this difference between, let's say, people who are in the institutions and so-called independent scene. And this notion of independency or this uh, kind of self-declaration uh, or self-organization around this notion of independency was uh, framed uh, in antagonism with the uh, state institu institutions and the people who are working in state institutions. And uh, from this perspective, I don't think that this was a smart uh, tactic or smart strategy uh, because uh, in a way, you know, like there are a lot of people who are working in the institutions we, who are uh, practically our allies. And uh, not everyone from the institution is uh, a, a ally was, or was our ally. But uh, m some of them were, and uh, we, the, the other scene never tried to practically to infiltrate in the institution or to see who are the, or to target the people or the institutions who can be our allies and to make, uh, you know, like this kind of um, um, coalition, let's say. Um, while since 2014, there is in Serbia uh, some kind of, um, not some kind, but uh, there is a uh, moratorium on employment in the state institutions. It is by Vucic government, uh, which was imposed uh, um, in, co in with EMF kind of uh, EMF um, uh, regulation, and uh, Vucic government imposed this uh, that people are not able to be new people are will cannot be employed in the state institutions, and since then uh, there are a lot of young people who are working for the institutions, but they have only um, flexible contracts, yeah. or not at all. Yeah. And I think those people are, I, but they are not belonging to independent scene. Mm -hmm. So, and there are like a lot of like them who are since four years are just working in this kind of um, uncertain relation, but for the state institutions, and not anymore in the independent scene. Um, or, in, or in NGOs, you can call them, in culture. So uh, there is like a whole bunch of this uh, reservoir of um, creative labor, so to say, uh, uh, which is practically in this limbo, limb. And nobody is uh, practically, I'm not just now thinking loud, you know, nobody is, attempt, is uh, attempting to organize these people in some kind of to articulate their demands, uh, to practically uh, unionize on a certain level, because of course trade unions are not recognizing them as uh, as um, yeah. as relevant uh, workers. So. Ah, okay. Um. It is very inspirational for me uh, that I heard experience from Slovenia uh, yesterday because uh, there um, artists from different fields or organizations from different fields of art are very well organized, as you said, and uh, there is solidarity be between them. So if uh, one category uh, needs more right, they are, as I understand yesterday, they all unite to fight for the group that has uh, little, mo uh, small rights than the others. Uh, so maybe here in Macedonia that is lacking because if uh, some uh, cultural workers are safe, they should uh, raise their voice for others because in that way uh, we will be in bigger number and maybe we could accomplish more. You could say uh, something about that experience you uh, told. 
Well, it's not all paradise in Slovenia, don't get me wrong. <laughs> uh, but, but after like uh, a long time of, of this organizing and struggle, we have, I think, come to the point of understanding that uh, there needs to be this basic solidarity between us. Um, so for instance, um, there, are, there, were, there are several examples that I could mention uh, around this. Uh, but for instance, in, in the last uh, year, uh, um, a couple of uh, organizations lost um, their financing uh, from the, the, the um, from the um, from the theater scene, uh, and that, for instance, uh, raised solidarity. Um, you know, throughout uh, the you know everyone from visual artists to public institutions and so on, people were supporting this struggle and also the judi judicial struggle that followed. Um, uh, and, y y you know, it's not very often that you would see that uh, in a situation where someone is struggling that people would then come and try to negate this uh, struggle, at least in the independent scene. Like, I'm not saying, or at least I would say not publicly, yeah, which sometimes it's also already enough. Um, so I, I think that this is important, like, Oftentimes, you know, uh, especially in Yugoslavia, where, where we inherited this uh, from socialism, this way of organizing where artists, like the, the writers are organized in one organization, the visual artists in one organization, the, the theater uh, uh, workers in, in the other. Uh, and there are oftentimes, like we are lacking platform in which we could all meet each other. And Asociacija in Slovenia is that platform because it has everyone from mu musicians to, uh, to theater the, uh, uh, workers and, and, and so on on ac actors and, and so on. Um, and it is explicitly made in this way in order to be the platform in which we can like come together and understand what kind of issues we have on different fields and which are the horizontal issues that we share uh, and then work on those horizontal issues. And uh, like Boyana said, now we realize it, not even that is enough, that we need to not necessarily integrate in, into this organization, but like find points of convergences with also people outside of the independent scene, because we are all too small and too marginalized, like in a bigger, wider context, uh, and within the bigger, wider uh, pro destructive processes within capitalist society to afford to be uh, uh, in, in a sort of self-created bubble. Right, right. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. That is that is a good example. Like, um, I'm not sure if you have been following, but um, Mladinsko Theater, um, which has a long history in also, I think it's very known in Yugoslavian context. Uh, in the last couple of years, under the leadership of creative uh, director Goran Inyats and uh, the director T um, uh, Tibor Mihalicayet, uh, have really uh, turned into a very uh, politically conscious uh, uh, and engaged theater that is really opening um, a lot of important issues in terms of uh, criticizing fascism and also being actively engaged in, in, in a struggle against it, nationalism, capitalism, and so on. And of course, uh, in a relative conservative society that Slovenia still is, um, like this has encountered uh, uh, a lot of nationalistic attacks. Uh, one was very recent where um, it was kind of like a combination of, um, uh, of newspaper articles uh, and a lot of nationalistic out outbursts against Goran, who is from Serbia, you know. So, um, and, uh, and in that situation, for instance, um, but that didn't came out of, the, out of the context, like Mladinsko Theater has been very actively engaging in solidarity with, with uh, uh, independent scene. Um, they are right now the only or one of the most innovative cases where a public institution is collaborating on a very equal basis with an NGO Masca, um, ha managing a common space, for instance, which is like the kind of partnership that hasn't really uh, been um, uh, created yet in Slovenia. So, you know, uh, because there have been like so many cases where Mladinsko Theater was supporting our struggle, of course, the other way around works as well. So now when they were attacked, uh, there was a huge support among the independent scene, among independent artists, and also of, cor of course public institution and public in general to, to, to um, condemn these nationalistic outbursts and attacks against them. So I think, uh, you know, there was a petition, there were a lot of like public events around this and so on. 
on. So I think that like, um, you know, okay, it, was, it wasn't a, a, a labor struggle, but it was still a struggle uh, and, and, and a political point that was very important in the society. And like, these are maybe like small examples of how how we can be like stronger together and like come over like the, um, the 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 differences that we share. I mean, of course, like we also cannot generalize this. Like um, we cannot pretend that just because we uh, understand each other and we you know uh, recognize each other's struggle that it means that we come f that we are suddenly in the equal position. Of course, we have to be aware of the privilege that comes from one position or the uh, you know the the lack of of stability that comes from the other. But um, we also have to understand that. Um, within this context, there are many different layers of instability on every, um, in ev from every position. You know that there is no uh, perfect, uh, uh, and no, th th this is not like that. We have to overcome this divide and rule, basically, situation that has too often uh, resulted uh, in a very weak uh, st uh, cultural sector struggles, um, and and I think that um, we have to. Uh, learn each other's uh, uh, situation and then out of that like see where we can come together. We will probably not come together on every topic, you know, but I think that it's very important to understand that like if we all gain some things, you know, like we can move for forward uh, uh, and create more stable community um, between each other. And this word community, I, I would uh, add and I think then I can stop, is something that like I think we way too often for um, uh, I, I think that um, in, in a very destructive capitalist um, uh, 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 processes, uh, the destruction of the community in, in many different forms uh, is one of the, the best ways how to, uh, how to maintain uh, a very obedient uh, and individualized uh, population. And I think that every time that we are able to create any kind of community in struggle, we are fighting against these destructive processes in the society. And I think it's very important that when we are building, when we are organizing, when we are mobilizing, let's keep in mind that like building community is what we are trying to aim for. If we lose, if we fight individually, what, what is the Suvin saying? That Suvin saying, if we fight in the, you, you say, because it's very <laughs> that, nice. That's a famous sentence of Darko Suvin, which I like a lot. It's like, if you don't fight collectively, uh, if you don't fight, uh, fight collectively, you will lose individually. Mm -hmm. So very simple. Andrew. Yeah, I want just to add in the relation institutions and um, independent so-called sector. It's that like, um, yes, there are alliances and yes, there are mutual understanding and support, but uh, the situation is very complex because in the system of cultural policy, how it's created uh, within the country, it's kind of, I don't know, deliberately or just happen to be, they are creating uh, this uh, antagonism between the institutional and non-institutional sector. Uh, like, for example, uh, uh, on one hand, you have uh, this uh, yearly financing program, which means that the uh, non-institutional sector is put together in the open call with the uh, local cultural institutions. So we have national and local cultural institutions. And then um, there are fights, especially coming from the people working in the Ministry of Culture. How is it possible that some museum in whatever, some city got less money than the, uh, some NGO working on some festival or some program. So they are the, I think it's deliberate, deliberately crea creating these relations like you are independent, what your independence means, but we have this our state institution that are fulfilling our local national interest, whatever that means, and then you create a kind of struggle between the people that uh, genuine is not existing there. And then on the other hand, you have the uh, national institutions, then the states is trying to kind of um, decentralize the power. So with the 
uh, next, I mean, within the new law uh, for the national institution, the financing uh, should be really like you have that amount of money and you create your artistic council and decide within the institution how the money will be spent. And on the other hand, for the local and the non-institutional sector, you're imposing more and more these technocratic requests uh, for uh, really project-based financing. And then you create through the policy this kind of antagonism that uh, it's um, really difficult to be overcome in order like to say, okay, you know, they are work against us, let's come all together and then fight against them, which is complicating a bit the situation, yeah. Okay, if uh, nobody has anything to add, I will conclude this uh, presentation of workshops that were led yesterday by Tiasha Pureber for the Advocacy of Cultural Workers and by Bojana Piškur and uh, Georgia Balvazovic about workers' inquiry in Macedonian context. And uh, we're gonna have a short break, coffee break, and then we start at 12 with the first actually session of the symposium Precarious in Capitalist Culture with Antonia Lampi, Liana Fukianaki, Corinna Apostol and Vladan Jeremic. So see you in a half an hour here again.